And from today's show news to late night news, to no one's surprise, NBC Today announced it has renewed Late Night with David Letterman for a fifth year. Letterman and company will celebrate with an anniversary special on February 1st in the Saturday Night Live time slot. That ought to make him feel perky. <laughs> That's right. Saturday night will be live next week with host Ron Reagan. Now extinguish all smoking materials and prepare for takeoff. It's David Letterman's fourth anniversary special. Okay, let me just close this up, tighten it up with that tape. That ought to hold it. What the hell? We're only going to Florida. <laughs> Hi, I'm David Letterman, and welcome to the late night fourth anniversary special. Maybe you can tell I'm standing on the tarmac at Kennedy Airport beneath the nose of this beautiful 747, or as we're calling it for tonight's trip, the uh, anniversary special. By the way, that's Connie Chung up there. John Chancellor didn't want to do it. <laughs> it's, it's a joke. Uh, we're going to Florida, the entire uh, staff and crew of the show. Miami. People say to me, Dave, why, uh, why are you going to Miami? Well, there's uh, three pretty important reasons. First of all, Miami is the fun and sun capital of the world. Second of all, a lot of friendly people in uh, Miami. And uh, thirdly, and I think perhaps the most important reason, we uh, got some kind of a deal on a hotel there. But don't worry about Florida because you're not going to see any of it. Tonight's show comes to you entirely from this gigantic 747 aircraft. And uh, you have my guarantee, ladies and gentlemen, that this program will be as much fun, be it just as exciting, and just as entertaining as any really long airplane trip. Okay, here we go. We're just minutes away from takeoff. Do me a favor, get that under the seat. Can you, will you just, come on, get in, come on, don't make trouble. We're about to take off. All right, here we go. From midair, somewhere over the eastern seaboard, it's the late night with David Letterman fourth anniversary special. Tonight, we're on a 747 with airborne stupid pet tricks, an in-flight snack, and plenty of highlights from past shows, including appearances by Tom Selleck, Eddie Murphy, Arnold Schwarzenegger, Bo Derrick, Billy Idol, and Johnny Carson. And now, a man who's anxious to see what this baby can do, Dave. Okay, I tell you, uh, uh, here we are, and before we uh, start the show, I want to I want to show you around the plane a little bit. See, it goes all the way back down that way, and of course, in a minute, we're going to go all the way up there. But you know what's great? When you fly out of uh, Kennedy Airport here in New York, right after takeoff, if you're lucky, you can get right to the window, and uh, if it's a clear day, you can see the parking lot and, you know, maybe watch your own car being stripped. <laughs> it's a lot of fun, and it's no extra charge. Here's, uh, here's the flight crew. They'll be taking care of us. They're pretty busy right now. Everything all right? Okay, good. Nice to have you here. Yeah. Uh, all right. Now this is uh, this is the audience, and uh, to tell you the truth, people in the audience are a little—they're uh, scared, and, and some are even even nauseous. You know, it's pretty much like they are when they're in the studio. <laughs> How you doing, Grant? Fine, Tom. Good. Keep moving those headphones. Oh, this is. Uh, let me show you something here. See this? This is the uh, megaphone. Now, I'll show you what you can do with the megaphone. Yeah. Yeah, back up there. <laughs> testing, testing. Let me turn this down. Attention, coach passengers. The following are your luncheon selections. Choose one. Bouillon. Saltines. Gum. Keep your hands off the livestock. There, there you are. Compliments to TWA. I hope you enjoy that. Oh, what fun. Okay. How do you do? Nice to see you. Can I get you some more beer nuts? <laughs> get a cab. <laughs> no, it's a joke. <laughs> All right, here we are. Uh, this is uh, first class, and this is where we're going to do most of the show. I want to show you something else. Talk about a confidence builder. If you're a nervous flyer, take a look at this. Flight plan, no idea where we're going. Okay, we're in for some big fun now. Uh, this is it. This is the spacious first class cabin on the 747 here from the friendly folks at TWA, uh, which, by the way, we only have to mention two or three times a minute <laughs> to, to pay for the thing. Paul, ladies and gentlemen, Paul Schaefer in the band. Say hello to our good friend, Mr. Paul Schaefer. Let me tell you a little bit about this uh, airplane. Paul, do you know what kind of plane this is? Is this an L-10? No, this is a uh, 747. 
And uh, you know who our captain is today, Paul? Who is it? Who would that be? It's we're in pretty good hands today. It's Captain Billy. Captain Billy. Billy. And uh, what luck! Uh, our co-pilot today is his little friend Scooter. <laughs> We'll give you the uh, entire name of the crew a little bit later. Paul, you know what kind of engines we have on this plane? What kind of engines, Dave, do we have? We have, of course, uh, Pratt & Whitney. Pratt & Whitney. JT9D-7. Can I get a pillow? <laughs> yeah. Is Somebody there anybody? Do you have a pillow you're not using? No. Can I borrow that blanket? <laughs> I got a back thing. Thank you very much. Uh, Trouble so on we'll planes. There you are. Just oh, use thanks. That. Okay. Thanks a lot. It gets cold sometimes. Don't yeah, you it gets a little chilly when you're flying. After you take off. Uh, well, let's get right to it. Shall we get right to it? Uh, you know, uh, people ask me, what is the most important part of any television show? Well, I think, of course, it's the free clothing, a hot buffet, and a trailer to relax in. But, you know, really what's most important is you, the home viewer. And that's why we set aside one night each week to answer our voluminous viewer mail. And one night a year, we take a look back at some of our favorite letters. So now, ladies and gentlemen, at 20,000 feet and climbing, letter number one. Let, let me try something. 20,000 feet. You wanna try this? Uh, letter number one. Dear sir, I have never been to New York, but will be vacationing there in the spring. While I am there, I would feel honored if I could get a chance to get a glimpse of one of my contemporary heroes, David Letterman. Sincerely, Michael Nierman, Marquette University. Uh, Michael, that certainly is a, a very flattering letter. And uh, by gosh, you can get the chance. And for only $2 a shot, there's, there's no better bargain in town for my money. In fact, I think we, we have some NBC promotional tour footage. Take a look at this, Michael, and, and see what you're in for when you come in. Well, keep your eyes at the far end of the hallway. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Everyone look down at the far end of the hallway, right down there. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Everyone look down. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Next show is at 4.15. all your friends. Thank you. Okay. You know what the cruising speed is, Paul? Cruising speed of this plane? Take a guess. The cruising speed. Oh. Uh, Knots? In knots or... No, no, miles. Miles per hour? Yeah. Oh, it's got to be a good 100 miles an hour. <laughs> it has to be, think? and it's 540. I wasn't totally yeah. out of the box. Captain Billy. Captain Billy's flying. Billy? Yeah. Uh, letter number two. Dear Dave, I've noticed on the best of Carson, that's, of course, the program that comes on just before us, you can tell how old the program is by the width of Johnny's lapels. By the width of what on your show will I be able to tell how old your reruns are? Well, this is a good question. This comes from Ed Baker, Kings Beach, California. You know, Ed, uh, if you look very carefully, you can tell just how old these programs are by the width of my pant cuffs. And here's an example. Hal, uh, let's roll that videotape, can we? For you. Okay, so then Spiro Agnew turns to uh, Martha Mitchell and he says, Ah, oh, why don't you take a nap? <laughs> 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 Say hello to uh, Paul Schaefer, folks. Hi, Paul. I hear applause in the back of the plane, so apparently they have started the film. Um, Dear Dave, just how good is Hal Gurney, uh, our director? Uh, does he do anything else besides make chili and count viewer mail? A little, just a little turbulence there, a little buffeting a little bit, there. Yeah. I'm freaking. No, no, we're not worried, are we? No. You know why we're not worried? Why? Captain Billy. <laughs> and the co-pilot, Scooter. Thank you. Uh, anyway, getting back to this letter concerning our own director, the lovable Hal Gertner, it says, uh, how good is he and what does he do besides count viewer mail and make chili? Just wondering, Charlie Perkins, Northern Virginia. Uh, you know, I, th I think Hal is pretty darn good, but as to these other questions, uh, we're going to have to ask Hal himself. Hal, uh, what is it that uh, you do besides make chili and uh, count off the viewer mail? I'm responsible for bringing the cleansing rains to deserts, the well-being of all birds and fish, I'm also in charge of long-term parking at LaGuardia. Yeah, I see. Well, uh, Hal, I think probably some of our viewers uh, notice that you're a little young. How old exactly are you? Well, in my time, I'm three years old. But in your Earth years, I guess I was born around the time of Socrates. <laughs> Paul, maybe it, uh, uh, you could come up with a little song for Captain Billy before we land. We. We will, I guarantee that we'll have a song, a special Captain Billy song by the end of the show. 
Yes, from the desk of Scott T. Horn. Oh, this guy means business. Dear Dave, what happens to all the viewer mail? Is it all neatly filed away, preserved for future generations? I'm sure some of the letters are literary masterpieces. Ponderingly, Scott T. Horn. Uh, Scott, uh, a viewer mail letter isn't really put into work until after it has been used on this program. And I think this clip from a film produced by Late Night in cooperation with the Weyerhaeuser Industries and the Mobile Corporation entitled Beyond Viewer Mail will help explain just exactly what I mean. Our viewers' letters are an invaluable resource. Once aired, they're separated according to chemical makeup and pulped. This raw material is then used in many ways. Some of it is used to make press board needed to build American homes or to produce insulation needed to keep those homes warm in winter and cool in summer. Other uses include landfill, the production of synthetic fuels, and the manufacture of powerful adhesives that are being used right now to ensure that Lady Liberty continues to hold her torch of freedom high in the coming years. Because of cheap or inferior pulp construction, some letters are of no use to us for any of these applications and are simply destroyed. But those viewers who write in and succeed can take pride in knowing that their contributions are working hard every day to make America strong. Captain Billy. Uh, okay, this brings us to our last letter. Great. Right. It's been a good four years, hasn't it, Paul? It's been a lovely four years, and I'm thrilled to be starting on yet another four. Okay. Let's hope. Why is it that the applause uh, Paul gets after you introduce him is so much louder and more sincere than the applause you get when you open the show? Tony Cochiera, Selden, New York. Uh, you know, uh, this is kind of an interesting thing, but since Paul is usually behind me when we begin the program, I'm really not sure what it is he is doing, and uh, I didn't know anything about it until I looked at this recent videotape of our fine program. This guy who lived in a uh, hollow tree just on the outskirts of Cincinnati, Ohio, never worked a day in his life, see? Well, not too long ago, the, the guy dies, and the police are looking into his tree, and they find this will. The guy leaves $10 million to the local mission, $5 million to the chapter of the SPCA, and $20 million to the United Fund. Now, here's a little footnote to the whole story. Turns out the guy was penniless. <laughs> now say hello to our good friend, Mr. Paul Schaefer. <laughs> Okay, folks, that's how it works. This is our fourth anniversary show. We'll be right back. Yes, we have Stupid Petrix live right here in the airplane. Paul, a little... Do we have it yet? Well, we will have it. We're working on it. We're working on Captain Billy. We'll okay. have it by the end of the show. All right. We'll be right back. Two, three, four. Welcome back, folks, to our fourth anniversary special. We're on this beautiful 747. We're on our way to Florida. And now, yes, it's time for stupid uh, Petrix. This is something we've been doing for four years. People bring their little animals into the studio, and they do amazing and wondrous little tricks that they have been taught by their owners. Now, because of some odd, quirky little FAA regulations, not all of the pets that we wanted to appear on tonight's broadcast were allowed onto the airplane. Now, uh, their tricks were terrific, and we didn't want to omit them from the show just because they were fat or drooled or overweight or ugly or something. I'm talking about the pets here. <laughs> so we've compiled a little montage of those earlier appearances on our show. Watch this, and then we'll be back with some live stupid pet tricks. Get your balls. There's one. Here's two. Here's... Oh. Come <laughs> Good boy. Come on, babe. Get up, sit. This is a much thinner rod. Yes. Oh! Hey! Unbelievable! There it is. Come here, Caesar. Caesar, come. 
Okay, those uh, those are some of the pets that uh, were wonderful on the show over the last four years. They couldn't be with us on the plane today, but we do have some some people and their animals. Our first participant. Keep in mind, ladies and gentlemen, this is 39,000 feet. Please say hello to Diane Wood and Diane's dog Fluffy. Kids, come on up here. Hi, Diane. Nice to see you. Uh, and this is a fluffy, what kind of dog is fluffy? Poodle Pomeranian. Poodle Pomeranian, ever been in an airplane before? Never, it's the first. Uh -huh. And uh, how about the dog? Oh, <laughs> it's it's <a> <laughs> uh, And uh, you, this is the first time the dog has flown? Yep, Okay. She's doing well. All right, let me remind people that this is, uh, this is not a competition, it's only an exhibition. Of course, no wagering. Now, uh, we'll win, we'll win. What, what, is the, uh, what is the dog gonna do for us? Fluffy Believe gonna do? Not, it's real talented, she jumps in boxes. Okay. Okay. Are you is ready? Any, yeah. Is anything I, I can do for you? No. Nope. All right. You know this airplane is being piloted by Captain Billy. Oh, hi, Billy. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Fluffy will get into boxes. There's one. I need applause. I really do. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Now, now, what does Fluffy do? Okay. All right. Now the, the boxes are getting smaller. I notice. Yeah. And the tiniest one of all. Here we go. One more. Come on, Fluffy. Well, it'd be a, be a shame if Fluffy hopped out an open window, wouldn't it? <laughs> it's, a, it's only a joke. Come on, Fluffy. You got one more here. Come on. All right. Thank you very much. Oh, well. Diane, thank you very much. Thank you very much. And I, I, I hope you have a way back to New York. Oh, so do I. Thank you. Thank you. Nice to see Fluffy. Diane Wood, ladies and gentlemen, and her dog Fluffy. You need some help with these? Thank you. All right. All right. Our next participant. Uh, do we have a Dean Simmons on the plane? Dean Simmons and Dean's dog is Curly Howard. Hi, Dean. Nice to see you. Hi, David. Where are you from? Uh, Philadelphia. Uh, and uh, what kind of dog is uh, Curly? Curly's a miniature dachshund. Uh, and has Curly ever flown? <laughs> never. Uh, never. And, uh, First time in Miami, too. How, how's he doing? You all right? Oh, he's doing great. He's, he's not nervous it. or yeah. out of control? I'm the one that's nervous. Are you really? Oh, okay, we'll keep an eye on yeah. you. Uh, let's see, what is, uh, what is Curly going to do for us he's today? He's going to open up a tennis ball can and take the balls out. Okay, Curly, the uh, dog, will open up a tennis ball can. Do we, yeah. do, can I do anything for you here? Uh, we don't have a drum for a drum roll. Or do we have a drum roll, Stephen? All right, we have a drum roll. The can of tennis balls. There's Curly. Opening the can. Now, let me give you a hand there. There you go, buddy. Look at himself. Yeah. Hey. All right. <laughs> now, wait a minute. You, you've got a cat in there, don't you? <laughs> He's going to have them all over the plane in a second. All right, Curly. All right, Curly. Nice yeah. job. Yeah. Thank you very much. I hope you enjoy the trip. Thank you, sir. And uh, again, let's uh, let's take a look at this now okay. in uh, slow motion instant replay. Thank you very much. Have a nice flight, Curly. Okay. All right. Stay away from the galley. <laughs> uh, do we have a mer? Okay, fine. Thank you very much. <laughs> I could listen to that all trip. Uh, do we have a Mary Jane Sorgel here? Hi, Mary Jane. How are you? Nice to see you. Did I get nice your last you. name correct? I'm Mary Sorgo, right? Sorgo, mm -hmm. nice to have you here. And what is your dog's name? Muffy. Muffy, and oh, we have a Fluffy and a Muffy. A Fluffy and a Muffy. Yeah. And uh, uh, did you name the dog? Right. Uh -huh. And what kind of dog is Muffy? It's a Yorkshire Terrier. Uh -huh. And has and, uh, Muffy ever flown? Um, oh, yes, he's flown before, but never twirling the baton and sitting on my head. <laughs> yeah, well, well, how many people have when you get right down to it? <laughs> so it's really exciting to be here. Oh, good. I'm glad you're enjoying yourself. And what is the, the trick that uh, this is Muffy? What does Muffy do? Well, Muffy is going to balance the baton on the back of his neck, uh -huh. and then he's going to sit up on top of my head, and hopefully we don't have any turbulence. Okay, well, let's keep twirling. our fingers crossed. Yeah, we okay. will. Okay, yeah, and then you'll do a little twirling. Sure, maybe just a little. Now, you know this is not an audition. No, I know oh, that. Okay, all right. Here we go. Uh, boy, that goes all the way down, doesn't I, uh, it? <laughs> Woo! <laughs> uh, okay. Uh, Mary Jane Sorgel and uh, Muffy. And uh, Muffy will sit on Mary Jane's head, and then, uh, you know, We'll take it from there. Go ahead. You can play doggy in the window. Would you like doggy in the window? Um, the organ. Paul, do you know doggy in the window? All right. All right. I'm ready. Doggy in the window.
job, Mary Jane Sorkel. And, and how did this get by the FFA, or the FAA, whatever it is? Well, we're going to look at it here in uh, slow motion, instant replay. Thank you very much. Nice Thank to have you here. Really exciting being okay, here. Okay, enjoy the trip. Okay, you too. Good luck getting a ride home. All right, bye bye. Uh, uh, we'll be right back, folks, to take a look at some people who've been with us. Tom Selleck, Eddie Murphy, Tina Turner, Mr. T, Johnny Carson, and many, many more. Schaefer, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah. You want to what? Headset? Headset. Second. And a mimosa. Do you have a mimosa? <laughs> Just a minute. Uh, now, Paul, uh, I understand we, we're, we're going to have an announcement from Captain Billy as to the progress of our flight. Oh, great. Do you have the song ready? Yeah, the song is ready. You want to do a little of the song and then we'll hear from Captain okay. Billy? Okay, okay, here's the song. All right. Two, Paul three, Schaefer, four. Yeah, Captain Billy, yeah. Yeah, he's a Willie. Yeah, Willie Nilly. Yeah, David Sanborn, what do you got to say? Yeah. Captain Billy, yeah, that's your silly. Captain Billy, yeah, 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 yeah. What do you think? Did, Paul, did you, did you really put your heart into that? Well, it's just... Did, did you spend a lot of time on that? Well, we didn't have much time. You know, we had to get the plane Captain off the ground. Billy, he's for... a frilly. Don't, don't, don't be get si too don't silly. Don't get too silly. Captain Billy. <laughs> All right, but we're going to hear from Captain Billy now? Yes. All right, so he'll tell us how high we are and where we're going. I don't want to know how high I am. <laughs> 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 Captain, Captain who? North Carolina. Uh -huh. From this point, we'll parallel the South Carolina, Georgia coast of Florida, and then enter Florida, just about Palm Beach, on into Miami. Latest weather, we have scattered clouds with 71 degrees, and uh, we should be there in an hour and 20 minutes, about 1.20 local time. Thank you. Did he sound all right to you? I don't know. It's a little tipsy. It sounded, it sounded a, little, a little timid. I don't know, a little a little under the weather. Well, I think he's nervous. It's stage fright, I guess. Yeah. Nervous? Yeah. Uh, you know, folks, over the last four years, we have welcomed literally hundreds of guests onto our television program. Sometimes, of course, that welcome turns sour, festers like rotting flesh, and soon turns to hatred. Other times, things go much better. Let's now take a look through the miracle of videotape at some of the memorable moments that we've had with these wonderful guests on our television program. I'm trying to keep my composure. I told Vince, my man, was going to come out here later, you know. Yeah. I said, look here, man, the guy going to get out there and try to be telling a lot of jokes. I'm not in the mood for a lot of jokes. I'm very tired, I'm irritable, and I'm mean. I'm very snappy, well, you know. The perfect guest. He said, no, then, he said, no. Here you go. I'm selling. One more. <laughs> All right, how about taking a shower? <laughs> no, wait a second. <laughs> yes, David, you sir. Will, you will find out. <laughs> you will find out, David, after a few years, this is the only way I can talk with anybody. <laughs> Jerry Hall, Tony McTreasure. <laughs> You know, sitting next to you, I get a terrible feeling. It's kind of a nagging anxiety in the back of my mind. I think I may have overinflated my tires. Well, I always have three pointers, and I hope I don't forget them right now. <laughs> now, one pointer is, there are three of them. They all begin with the same letter. It's a mnemonic device, and I'm trying to recall what they are. And this is certainly an embarrassing moment. I know what you're talking about. It's, uh, it's, uh, they begin with the letter O. That's right. Yeah. It begins with the letter O. Yeah. That is correct. And One is obey the rules. Obey the rules. Right. Yeah. And, uh, the other is, letter O, obey the rules. 
We had I had them this afternoon. One is often enter. Enter often. That is correct. Yeah, often enter. And the third one. <laughs> It slipped my mind. <laughs> uh, what is the third one, Gerard? Organize your material. That's right. That's right. <laughs> You're uh, out in public. The people come up to you. Are you bothered? Are you a security problem? Well, the drug dealers in Westforth call their drugs by my names and my songs. Like there's White Wedding, Cocaine, and Rebel Yell Quaaludes, and <laughs> Dancing With Myself smoke and stuff so yeah people recognize me everywhere really you, you must be a very proud young man <laughs> uh all right now are you gonna take a shower for us tonight or not well we go. actually i hope it shows up i think it's a really one of those popular movies action adventure fun good acting in it uh, simply because of me, you know, and uh, so it, it's going to go through the roof. You know? those, those steroids, have, by the way, apparently don't affect your ego, do they? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Clean it up, clean it up, clean it up. I want to thank you. Actually, this is about right. <laughs> There's a very distinctive voice on the other end of the phone, and it was kind of cutting through the haze. Hello, Ted? <laughs> I said, uh, yes, and the voice said, uh, President Nixon here. <laughs> uh, some people on the, the staff thought it would be nice, <laughs> nice to give you this gift. The tuna turner. Okay, go ahead, uh, okay. Tina, crank it up there. All right. Paul, can we have a little music here while tuna, uh, Tina cranks her tuna? Oh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> Yeah. 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 Oh, oh, my God. Whoa. Now just go in there and all oh, you've got your... I, I know. I... Come on. I, uh, go in there. I hate you. <laughs> Why am I doing this? I ran Friday. You ran Friday. And pulled a groin muscle. Mm -hmm. Your own? Uh... <laughs> I was in all the promos. You, yeah. you must have seen those. I think you have a promo if you want to take a look at it. I was in those. Do you right. have one? Okay, well, yeah, let's look at the promo of the Long Hot Frenchman's Summer. Frenchman's Band, a town ruled by the iron fist of one man, a town steaming with the passion of one woman, a town brought to the brink of murder by the arrival of a young drifter. What did you do to my wife? <laughs> Curious. Jason Robards, Ava Gardner, Sybil Shepherd, Don Johnson, and a very special appearance by the Fugitive Guys, Chris Elliott. A long, hot summer. Sunday. Okay, this is uh, this is the the galley where the the meals are prepared. You know, take a look at the sanitary conditions. Uh, you know you're getting first-rate food here. And you know something smell. I think something's actually cooking here. Let me just open one of these up. Oh my God, it's one of the pets. Only a joke. I tell you what, uh, we have to pause here for station identification. We'll be right back. Yeah, it's Muffy. It's Muffy. Oh, thank you so much, ladies and gentlemen. You know, science has given us the miracle of man flight, and of course, it's also given us this television show taped in midair. But above all, it's given us these dazzling advances in airline passenger comfort and convenience. We're going to show you a couple of these new products tonight. First of all, it's the field guide to airline dessert squares. You know, you really can't tell one dessert square with the other without this one. They're all here from the light brown dessert squares, yes, to the dark brown dessert squares. <laughs> 
You know, nothing makes a flight go faster than a good practical joke. Now, here is my favorite. This one is the flip-flopping necktie. Now, see, when this works, other passengers will think the turbulence has suddenly turned the plane upside down. And uh, just turn it on and wait for the fireworks. Here's how it goes. Oh, oh, my. Thank you. Oh, my gosh. So, so, so is that like a joke tire, or are you just glad to see me? <laughs> stop it, stop it. Uh, you know, it's always a tense moment when the cabin of the aircraft depressurize. But now, this potentially life-threatening situation can be a million laughs thanks to these Harlem Globetrotter oxygen masks. Here they are right over there. Yes, you'll laugh in the face of disaster thanks to the zany bobbing and weaving of the clown princes of basketball. Now, how many times have you picked up a copy of the in-flight magazine only to find that someone else has already done the crossword puzzle? What are you going to do? You could throw up your hands and give up or do what I do. Bring along a sheet of these. Blank stick-on squares. That's right. After a few painstaking hours, the crossword will look like new. How's it, how's it going there, Larry? Going great, Dave. I like it even better than doing the puzzles. <laughs> oh, gosh. Can you get your tie to go up? Nope. <laughs> I didn't think so. You know... Stop it. You know, the worst thing about air travel, as far as I'm concerned, is, of course, the difficulty in opening those little packs of almonds. Here, look at this. You chew on them, you tear on them, you just can't get them open. Well, ladies and gentlemen, that's no longer a problem, thanks to this handy and easy-to-carry nut package opener. Excuse me, do you mind if I open some nuts for you? You look like you could go for some nuts about now. Yeah, I think so. All right, here it is right here. Just open it up, place the nuts in there. Go ahead and tear that off, if you will. There you go. You've got nuts aplenty. Please enjoy the flight. You know, is there anything more refreshing than the delightful hot towel the airlines provide their passengers at the end of a grueling flight? Well, I don't think so. The problem is, however, it's never enough. And that's where this whole body hot towel comes in. Let's demonstrate it for you now. This is the whole body hot towel. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. The whole body hot towel. Oh, ho, ho, ho. <laughs> you're enjoying that, aren't oh, you? It hurts. <laughs> okay. All right. All right, we'll pass that around. Oh, okay. You know, uh, when you need a flight attendant, here's a surefire way to get their attention. Simply attach this lower torso dummy to the inside of your window so that it appears desperately wedged in the sub-zero <laughs> upper atmosphere. Here's how it works. Excuse me. Excuse me. You don't mind if I just... Uh, there you go. See? See how that works? Now, uh, a flight attendant is sure to rest your seat, and you can all share in a really good laugh. Hi, Grant. How are you doing? Nice to see you. Okay. Uh, we're going to pause here. We've got plenty more show to go. Thank you so much. We'll be right back. Let me, let me, see, this, let me see this body again. Yeah. <laughs> Traveling man. Oh, traveling. Because we're doing a little traveling. Doing a little traveling. Yeah. You know, every once in a while, we like to get outside of the studio and uh, make new friends. Uh, sometimes our camera takes us to California, sometimes onto the streets of New York City. But wherever we've gone, we've learned one simple thing. People everywhere are all basically 90% water. <laughs> Let's take a look now at some of the highlights of these videotaped excursions in the past couple of years. Joe, uh, what's your last name? Shaw. Joe Shaw? Mm -hmm. Where are you from, Joe? I'm from Chicago. Uh -huh. And you're living now in L.A., obviously? Obviously. What do you do for a living, sir? I'm a computer operator. And uh, what kind of car do you have here, Joe? A uh, 75 Monte Carlo. And uh, you've had it since 75? Right. Nice ride? Yes, it is. And your license plate, Joe, is? A cool 75. Uh, a cool 75, does that pertain in any regard to you? Um... I guess you can say it does in one way, because I am pretty cool. Consider yourself to be a cool, <laughs> cool person. And, and uh, how would you demonstrate that coolness? Are you, are you being cool now? 
<laughs> Not really. I'm pretty nervous right now. Really? You don't act nervous at all? Well, that's part of the coolness in me. <laughs> and your name, sir, is? Jess Gonzalez. Jess Gonzalez, and you are Fat Boy. Right. <laughs> 60 some odd years. Do you find that, that on the freeways people tend to stay away from a guy driving a car with a license plate that says fat boy or are they attracted to that? <laughs> they go by there and then you say, yeah, he is fat, you know. <laughs> so that must give you an extra sense of pride when you're yeah. out there on and the highway. They go by, just go like that to him. I says, yeah, so what? You know, well, don't bother me. And you are fat guy. <laughs> oh, that's good. Mike, have you been driving around Southern California? Have you ever seen any other fat license plates? No, I haven't. No. None whatsoever? None whatsoever. As far as you know, you may be the only fat license plate in uh, L.A.? In L.A., yes. Okay. We have a surprise for you. <laughs> Jess, back it on in here. <laughs> Mike McGarvey, fat guy. Jess Gonzalez, fat boy. <laughs> Quite a moment, isn't it? Yes, it is. I'm particularly interested in this photo of, I guess this is one of your customers, because he signed it uh, to you, B.B. Uh, King. So, food stains? Right. What kind of food? Do you remember identifying any food stains when he would bring something in? Oh, uh, grease from meat. Mm -hmm. All right, meat grease. Uh, gravy? Gravy. Uh, thick, rich sauces? No comment, I don't know. <laughs> White sauces, red sauces? All sauces. Mm. All right, let's go on to beverages. What, uh, any beverage stains you were able to identify? I wouldn't be able to recognize them. Okay, uh, desserts. Any kind of dessert stains that you can identify? I wouldn't. Ice cream? Uh, Pudding? I guess, I, I really don't. Jello? Uh, flan? Probably. Baked Alaska? Baked Alaska. Fudge? I imagine. Pralines? Yes. <laughs> Hi, I'm Mr. Curious. Excuse me, sir. Can you tell me? Excuse me, sir. Excuse me, ma'am. What's your What's your dog's name? How are you? Can I ask you? This guy. Excuse me. Come here. Maybe you can help me. You can be my assistant. You can be uh, the assistant, Mr. Curious. All right. I'm deputizing you. Help me. Help me stop this gentleman here. Excuse me, sir. This is my deputy. How you doing? What do you have in your bag here? What I got in my bag? What's in the bag? Well, you want to ask me? I'm just curious. Clothes. What kind of clothing? You want to do both. Oh, yeah? Can we take a look at it? Show me the idea first. Joe Friday, homicide. Let's see the clothing. You just hold it for the ice cream cone there. No, don't eat these. No, don't eat them. Mr. Curious. Mr. Curious. Yeah, I just want to ask you a couple of questions. What, what do you do for a living? I'm a mailman. <laughs> Thank you. Hi, how are you doing? Hi. Excuse me a second. Do you have a minute, sir? That's right. I'm Chevy Chase. Nice to see you. Did you, let me ask you a question. Did you enjoy Fletch? Did you go see Fletch? No, I didn't see Fletch. I How about National Lampoon's yeah, European right. Vacation? Did you enjoy that? I'm going back. I'm oh, back please go here. see that. My man, what's up, my man? How are you doing? I'm doing like Moses. Nice to see you. Nice to see you, bro. You take care. You know what I'm saying, man? Sure. Hands, bro. It's the homeboy. I've been chilling out. Yeah, yeah. Okay, Nick, in the final analysis, uh, I know you've written a book on this topic. What is it that you need to know to buy a hairpiece? Well, let me read you, uh... A chapter from my book, in fact, right. the last page. What do you need to buy your first hairpiece? Courage. The courage to stop thinking about it and to start shopping for a hairpiece. The courage to see yourself going to work for the first day with your new hairpiece. The courage to go home to your wife and children for the first time with your new look. The courage, if unmarried, to face your girlfriend or girlfriends for the first time. The courage to see all your personal friends with your new hairpiece. The courage to go to the club for the first time wearing your new hairpiece. Courage, courage, courage. That's all it takes. Thank you very much, Nick. Thank you.
Okay, uh, here we are. This is the man driving the bus, as you can see from the door. We're talking about Captain Billy. Nice job so far, Captain. Pleasure Thank to meet you. you. Uh, do me a favor, introduce the uh, gentleman in the cockpit with you. Captain Wally Moran in the, Captain, in the right the seat there, uh -huh. and flight engineer George Strickland. Here. How do you do, George? Nice to meet you. How long have you been flying? Well, I've been with TDB 22 years. 22 and, years is a yeah. long time to fly. Yeah. How many hours is that? About 10,000. Oh, my gosh. Now, uh, uh, during takeoff, I have to ask you something. I thought I heard harmonica music coming out of the cockpit. Well, in fact, George uh, George has a little uh, harmonica I that he plays so. once in a while. Yeah. <laughs> so you were actually playing it during takeoff? Uh, not really true, but uh, uh, what you probably heard was a little harmonic uh, sound from the engine. Everything all right today? Everything was great. We had a super day. We've been very fortunate with turbulence and weather, so it worked out real well. Nice to meet you. My pleasure. Uh, do something about here. your last name. No, okay. I'm joking. <laughs> Thank you, gentlemen. Nice meeting you. Thank we'll you. we'll uh, leave you now. Okay. Uh, we'll be right back, folks. On the airplane, it's uh, meal service time. What, what is your name? My name is Susan Lieber. Nice to meet you. You're the. Thank you. I'm the in-flight service manager. How long have you been with TWA? In my 20th year now. Congratulations. Nice to meet yeah. you. And your name? Hi, David. I'm Suzanne Yanis. Suzanne, nice to meet you. Same here. How many years have you been here? Six years. Six years. All right. And this is the meal we're going to get, right? Yes. Now, yes. Uh, this is the club sandwich. It's a club sandwich yeah. with a black olive. Black olive and three carrot sticks. Three carrot sticks. Now, now I've never, I've never done time, but I just have the feeling. You know, if I were at Rikers Island, I'd get something a lot like this. And I'm guessing what this set the airline back maybe a buck and a quarter. Oh, I think more like a dollar seventy-five. Yeah. <laughs> so it's actually closer to two dollars. Really? Well, oh, thank for you. Only the best. Thank you very much, and thanks for all your help and uh, your accommodations here on the. We're certainly enjoying our. Don't worry. Don't worry about it. It's just a valve. <laughs> Watch out! All right, I hope you folks like smelling methane. Presently, we're cruising at about 30,000 feet, uh, and as I look down on the fields, the rivers, and the cities far below, I, I can't help getting a little philosophical and wondering, gosh, what would it be like to drop some stuff from this altitude? So we can't really do that, but we can show you a selection of items tossed off a five-story tower in New Rochelle, New York. Some balloons filled with guacamole. Here we have the balloons filled with guacamole, and this is the most frequently requested item that we dropped today. Maybe something from ancient mythology. Okay, here's a little something for you students of mythology. I'll be Zeus, and I'm going to throw these lightning bolts down onto a cluster of disbelieving villagers. Here we go. Please do my favorite. A watermelon. It's no secret that the biggest fraud in American entertainment today is the CBS Late Movie. Why? It's no movie. It's cheap, lousy reruns. Well, ladies and gentlemen, tonight, the CBS Late Movie is being canceled. <laughs> Remember when you were a kid in the summertime and maybe you didn't have enough money to afford fireworks? So mom, feeling kind of sorry for you, would take a five-pound bag of flour and mix it with gasoline, light it. It was colorful, it was fun, and most importantly, it was really safe. Show me something I can tell my grandchildren about years from now. You know, I think that's an important consideration for all of us. And believe me, ma'am, you've come to the right place. Okay, we're getting terribly close to our destination now. We have to pause here for station identification. We'll be right back. Here we are at 
are the uh, upper passenger section of the 747. Now, if this were a normal flight, this area would be filled with drunken businessmen. Uh, today, of course, it's filled with drunken TV technicians. <laughs> oh, gosh. You know, anyone familiar with this program knows that most of the time we tape our show without pauses or interruptions. But there are those rare occasions when we do have to go back and edit. Sure, it takes some time, takes some effort, and some expense. But it is necessary if we want to maintain the seamless professional quality that has come to be synonymous with late night. Let me show you now some examples. Sometimes we have to edit the program because of an innocent slip up like this one. Go downtown and get this thing zoned and approved by the, uh, the building code and that kind of thing. Oh, it took hours. Your day? Yes, Hal. The holster. Oh. We can put that out there. Sure. In four years, people always ask me, Dave, uh, any trouble with audience rowdiness? <laughs> well, you know, we have terrific audiences, but occasionally, yes, something will go wrong with the audience. You. Yeah, by the door. You. Yeah, right. You know damn well what I'm talking about. Uh, you know, sometimes guests have funny ideas about what they should do on a show. Let's, let's watch what happens when that occurs. We're back with the Blue Angels. Now, Colonel, uh, I understand you brought some uh, film of some of the amazing aerobatic stunts you and your men perform in the sky. Um, no, I didn't. I thought we were going to get the chance. Well, I to... thought it might be more interesting if we demonstrated some of those stunts here in the studio live for you. Flight group, assemble. Delta formation. Heel off on my signal. One. Two. Three. And you know, this is something I'm kind of embarrassed about. There was a time that my own personal life was completely fouled up, and frankly, I forgot just how far I'd let myself go until I, I looked at this videotape. You remember that, don't you, Hal? You were quite comforting to me. Uh, I'll never forget it. Shall we go? Yeah. You know, when you came to me late at night and were able to talk to me and help me out of my depression, I'll, I'll never forget that. This is my first book. So you've only written one book? That's right. Well, I think we all know how painful that can be. Tell you what, uh, we'll be right back. And you know, finally, we feel it's our duty as broadcasters to bring you lots of informative demonstration segments, but sometimes these two can get a little out of hand. Out to suture the aorta. <laughs> Man, I think we all know just how painful that can be. <laughs> oh, now, gosh. I'm going to clamp off a supplying artery. Okay, hold it, hold it. Let me do that. Well, it's pretty tricky. What I do you don't think? know if... Okay, let me try it. All right. But... Maybe when he shaves his head before he comes to All right, where do you get it? It's Just... right in there. All right. Just... All right. Whoops! Oh, oh, oh no! Oh, 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 run, run for your lives! We're getting... We got you here. Oh, oh, oh. oh what are you... Oh, I hope he's grounded. <laughs> Certainly hope you enjoyed that. Excuse me, are, uh, are you with the airline? No, sir. <laughs> oh, good. good deal. Just a helpful passenger. Uh, we'll be right back, folks. You need a Phillips head for that? On the other side. Oh, okay, good. Thank you so much, gentlemen. Welcome back to the show. You know, when the talk show was first conceived, and I believe it was the Greeks who came up with it, the idea was that a host would have guests on the show and they'd talk. Well, the Romans, of course, added a band leader, and then Edison came up with the movie clip, until by modern times it really had grown beyond recognition. All right, let's take a look now at some of the activities and stunts that we've tried on our own program over the last four years. Three. Describe the scene to you, but I am blinded by the mist. It appears that David oh. Letterman has come out of that mist and has crossed the finish line first. Here's the shot from the late night sky cam. There we are. Now here it goes, working its way across the studio. Ooh, there's the sky cam operator. Unbelievable, isn't it, ladies and gentlemen? Thank you. <laughs> 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 
Here we go. Oh. With the proper holiday spirit, let me just try. <laughs> this is the seventh floor. Gentlemen, how are you? It's all right. Just some friends of mine. Come on, folks. Let's pick it up. Pick it up. Here we go. Come on. We don't have much time. Come along. <clears throat> yeah. We have we have beverages. We have the grill. We have desserts. Back here we have your cold cereals. Anything you want, it's on me. Anything you want. Hi. These these people are all with me, and when they come through, I'll I'll take care of everything. Okay. Well, no. But, but when you ring it up, I'll take care of it. Is that all right? Yeah. Okay. We have about 300 people here. 300. Yeah. All set. Go ahead. Okay, we go. Look out, Karen. Cher singing has them horses spooked. That was good. Oh, oh here we go. <laughs> well, uh, yes, uh, sir. What, what can we do for you? What is your name? I think you know who I am. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, what, uh, what can we do for you, sir? Well, I'd like to know a little bit more about the conspiracy, if you don't mind. Uh, I'm, not, I'm not sure I understand. Uh, yeah, I thought you'd about. say that. You know exactly what I'm talking about. I'm talking about Schaefer and the shredded documents. I'm talking about Wendell and the laundered money. I'm talking about Connie Chung's secret committee of 12... Uh, I'm talking about Grant Tico... All right, so that's what they're doing. They're right over there. The prime time today show. And are they doing something now? Okay. <clears throat> See what we can do. Go ahead, Carl. Take a look out there. I'm gonna... Attention, attention, people of New York City. My name is Lawrence Grossman, the president of NBC News. This prime time program was my idea, and I'm not wearing pants. I got the suit of chips on here. I'm going into the tank. Oh, this is like a party at your house. <laughs> Take a handful and pass them. Want some surprise out oh, of yeah. us, David? Yeah, okay, yeah, okay. Tell her, uh, show him some surprise, would you please? Oh! I'd like to point out that these, uh... No, come on now. These animals are not being hurt in any way. Oh! 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 Now, you're going to just say the, all the vowels very loudly, okay. and we'll see. Uh, not yet. Not One, yet. two, three, four. The, I got to do this. Jeez! <laughs> well, it's speak, it's speak into the... I'm sorry. Uh, can I turn? Didn't, uh, any, didn't anybody check you out on this stuff? They were much today? better at rehearsals. For one minute, we'll have a clock on the screen, and from the official Baseball Rules 1984 edition, oh they will be typing tonight, section 8.05, the Balk Rule. Begin typing. One minute here. Starting out with the Balk Rule. They have it in front of them. <laughs> well, well, kind of a nose job there. Okay, all right, thanks. I hope you enjoyed that. I tell you what, we're going to take another break. We'll be right back after this. All right, go ahead, do it. Do it. Oh, I can't do it.
Hi. Just toweling off. Thank you very much. You know, there's uh, one group of performers whose work requires incredible strength, astonishing hand-eye coordination. No, 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 no. I'm not talking about Siegfried and Roy. I'm talking about professional athletes. And this year, we've certainly welcomed some of the biggest and the best. You can go back in here and clean up. Boy, we could use some Lysol. I'm serious about that. Do you know who Terry Forster is? Left-handed relief pitcher. The fattest man in all of professional sports. Just once, when they see this mammoth figure, this silo, get up in the bullpen, I just want him to say, well, looks like Terry Forster is warming up. He's a left-hander, ERA about 3.5. What a fat tub of goo. Whoa, my. You only eat one meal a day? Yes. You're going to waste away to nothing. No, 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 no. <laughs> uh, all right, now, William, what do you have for your one meal? Well, let's have a salad, uh, maybe a little... <laughs> a salad? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and, and a tab, and I guess you go to bed then, right? No. <laughs> Here's Terry right here. Now, if anybody has seen Terry recently playing, they know that this photograph was taken when Terry was 12. A uh, height is 6'3", weight... 210. <laughs> uh, this is Buddy talking. I need 4,000 more hits, right, asked Bianca Lana, uh, rallying to his own defense. But I'm a lot closer to Rose than he, Letterman, is to Johnny Carson. <laughs> I brought this bat for you. All right. And actually, this is a bat I used probably half the season. Is that right? As you can tell, there are no ball marks on it. <laughs> Oh, boy. That's true. How are you? Fine. Can I, can I get you a mimosa? <laughs> <laughs> but w would it be safe to say that you're over 250? Watch it. I'm sitting close. <laughs> would, are, are you, do you weigh that much? Are you the biggest man in, in organized ball today? <laughs> oh, we have down here. This is, this is a new item, uh, Jim. This is the, the late night headband. Oh, yeah. Two, we have this size and this one right here. And, and like you know, yeah, oh, oh, what else is in here? Oh, look at this. My gosh, look at that. Um, uh, it's uh, it's the late night uh, $50 bill packets. Now, Jim, we'd, uh, we'd like to see that headband come Super Bowl Sunday. Hi. You know uh, how every now and then, thank you very much, your favorite uh, liquor will come out in some kind of collector's decanter, some sort of a ceramic bottle shaped like a locomotive or a state bird or, or even Elvis. Yeah, you know, new containers for the same old stuff. Well, that's more or less the idea behind the theme shows that we've put on over the years. So join me now as we remember some of the special moments from those special programs. Thank you. Excuse me, one time. I'm not sure I'm finished. <laughs> Will someone please release me from this trance? <laughs> Can I? Okay. David. I've been hypnotized. One check for David. Okay, here we go. Let me, let me give you a hand with some of these. Up, 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 up. All right, David. Up to the for David. Will you sing to us the way you used to? Oh, no. Yeah. One song. Special Christmas light in the way we used to. Oh sure, Melissa, come on over here. This will be a lot of fun. Uh, Have yourself a merry little Christmas. Let your heart be mine. Do you resent all the re wreaths and fitness experts like Richard Simmons? Do I do, I do what? Our first guest on Stupid Petrix is Mary Washington and her dog, Jumpy. <laughs> Hi, I'm David Letterman. Good to meet you. What does your dog do? He moves around. Huh? <laughs> you know, this dog reminds me of some of our government officials. For example, President Reagan. <laughs> Go, Yan, San, Ni, Ichi. 
And in New York City, we have people who push you under the train. New York and Tokyo are very different places. In Tokyo, there are people who push you under the train. But in New York, there are people who push you under the train. But in New York, there are people who push you under the train. Larry, Larry, can you hear me? Larry, Larry, can you hear me? <laughs> we're emotionally exhausted, so here's what we're going to do. We're going to do the show, all right. It's going to be a brand new show, and it's going to be pretty entertaining, pretty exciting. But we're just not going to do it in our studio. Uh, as a matter of fact, come on in. I'll show you what. See, uh, there's the studio audience. Uh, we've dismissed the studio audience. They're on their way home. And uh, we're going to do a show from our uh, 14th floor offices. Uh, everybody is here. Bill is here. Uh, we have guests over here. Uh, Paul is here. Paul, can you play the, uh, the theme? All right, we do the introduction now? Okay, so Paul will start the theme. Okay, there goes the theme. All right, and then we cue Bill. Do you have the announce? All right, do the announce, Bill. Uh, from New York, where we're all just two times. Okay, Hal. Okay, in five, four, three, two, one, go. Okay, thank you very much, Paul. That's uh, it for tonight, folks. That's it for our 90-minute fourth anniversary program. I want to thank uh, everybody who uh, helped us produce this program, not only tonight, but over the last four years, uh, from uh, the crew in Studio 6B to everybody up in 1410W uh, at NBC, also NBC and their help for arranging this particular show, the, uh, the folks at TWA for all of their fine help, and uh, the flight crew. 
Uh, also, the people at the FAA, they were very, uh, very uh, good in, in helping us arrange this. My thanks to uh, Bill Wendell, Paul Schaefer, of course, Sid McGinnis, Will Lee, Steve Jordan, and uh, with our band again tonight is, of course, David Sanborn. Thank you very much, Paul, for everything. Now, Monday, yes, kids, we're coming back on Monday. We'll have uh, Goldie Hawn, Richard Lewis, and now I must mention the Mayfair House. <laughs> They're helping to pay for part of this trip. <laughs> but, you know, don't come down there, you know, because now you know where we are. But, but don't bother us. <laughs> don't get anywhere near the place or we'll have you picked up like that. <laughs> have a good weekend. Good night. Has now turned on the fasten seatbelt sign in preparation for our landing at Miami's International Airport. Please return to your seats and be sure that your seatbelts are securely fastened. Again, we thank you for choosing to fly with TWA. One, two. The late night entourage was late in getting to Miami. After taping parts of a fourth anniversary special on the plane on the way down, they were ready to relax. The sun came out just as festivities began on the roof of the Mayfair House Hotel, and the host seemed ready for a party. Trash the place. Go ahead and trash the place. Turn, yeah. turn the dump over. Most of the late night cast was there for shrimp and champagne. Announcer Bill Wendell, Chris Elliott, famous as the fugitive guy, and Larry Bud Melman, expecting some fun in Miami. Well, of course, that's why people come to Miami, right? What are you going to do to have fun here? Well, I don't want to give away trade secrets. <laughs> Along with some familiar late-night faces, there were plenty of people here who really looked like they belonged. I assume you're a stupid pet trick. Yes, I'm a stupid pet trick. What do you trick. do? Uh, well, my dog actually will sit on Let's my head. It. Here we go. Hey, Ma. Late-night publicists claim that their show is the first to offer frequent flyer bonus mileage. The Airborne Special and the trip to Miami were Letterman's idea. And we needed about a three-hour plane ride, and uh, there were two choices, in all honesty. Uh, Miami and Scotland was mentioned. And everybody said, geez, what, what the heck, why are we going to Scotland in the, in the middle of uh, the end of January? And so uh, here we are in Miami, and happy to be here. About 50 members of the late night crew will be staying through the weekend to shoot some funny bits and pieces that will be on the air over the next several weeks. In Coconut Grove, Nick Bogert, News 4. Is this, uh, this is a gentleman this is, I saw at the airport. Nice this to see is you again. How are you? You tried to trip well, how are you? No, 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 no. It's all is a mix up. A misunderstanding is what that was. That'll never hold up in court, by the way. Did they take some of the seats out of the plane for your... Uh, I think in first class we took about uh, two rows out. And other than that, we didn't really much alter it. Uh, and they put the control room upstairs. And that was really... Upstairs. 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 What is it, 747? Yeah. yeah. Ah. That was great. And uh, several miles of cable everywhere, you know. And uh, it was terrific. We had to do the stupid Petrix. The stupid Petrix. And uh, essentially, it was just a giant empty plane. There was a, it was only about half filled, and it was great. It was a lot of fun. <laughs> kind of like flying on the presidential limo. Uh, well, uh, I guess it was. Uh, put some beds in the back, and yeah. you were all set. But it was a great trip, and uh, just a lot of fun. When are you going back? You, you can get stayed on here a few days. I'll be, I'll be here till uh, Sunday. Again. So where did this crazy idea come from? Uh, we were sitting in a production meeting saying, it's our fourth anniversary, what are we going to do? We've gone through the, a baby being born, we've gone through pretty much every idea we thought that, that we had. Let's, let's come up with something. And we were kind of nervous, and David said, well, why don't we do it on an airplane? And we all said, hey, great idea. It's Dave's idea. How could you, how could you go wrong, you know? Then if anything happens, we blame Dave, that's all, you know? Um, and it seemed like a good idea if we could get it done. Now, we had done a show called uh, a Too Tired to Do a Show, which was a show that was in the office. We said it was too uh, warm out, and it was very successful for us, the show. So my great analogy was, well, it's just like the Too Tired to Do a Show, except it's in an airplane. I, so then we had to figure out how to get an airplane and where we were going to go when we get the airplane and who was going to accept us when we got it. And uh, 
and then also to see if we were serious about this. And I asked Dave maybe five or six hundred times if he was serious, and he said, yeah, if we could, if we could do it. I asked uh, Hal Gurney, our director, and I asked uh, around with the programming people. They said, if you can do it, uh, go ahead. So we uh, uh, made a lot of calls. And there was a, there's a company in California who is used to doing this for, you know, this other shows. Stuff, huh? Yeah. And uh, we, uh, we found out that TWA was willing to give us an airline and, and that uh, this hotel was willing to, to put us up. And we thought that the, the, the time was perfect because three hours is, is a, 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 you know, the right amount of time. Uh, we can do a show in, in three hours. Uh, you also, in three hours, you need a big plane to bring a lot of people. You know, it's not like going to Atlantic City where no. you take that 747 up, you got to bring it right down. And uh, we couldn't bring the whole crew on a Cessna 150 or something <laughs> like that. So. So we figured it would be Miami, and we had heard some very nice things about people who had been guests on the show. It has yeah. been Don Johnson, and we have people on our staff who live in uh, Coconut Grove who said it's great, and people who were actually going to Miami not to visit their parents. So when all of those things came together, we thought, well, it would be a great idea if we can work this out to get on a plane, go to Miami, enjoy uh, it, relax, reward ourselves for the four years, and, and do something that's, uh, you know, different. So the show is in the can now. And it's in the can. There are a couple of things you're going to have to tighten Not up. Not tighten up, it's in, yeah. it's in the can, right. And, and it, it works, I think it works great. And I, and I, uh, I don't know, maybe this might be the start of a lot of shows, you know what I mean? I, I maybe get a lot of 747 experience and then move on to 1011 shows and 727 shows and who knows, you know? And, you know, just do local helicopter shows, but it's now working great. All the time. Okay. Yeah, it's working great. Good a time. pleasure. Okay. Right. Although it's very difficult to tell because we, uh, as much as we wanted to just shoot a 90 minute show beginning right through to the end, it was impossible because of the, uh, uh, we landed about a half an hour too soon. Uh, and so we had to do a lot of it on the ground, and, and then at that point you lose the, uh, the continuity of the thing and you're not really sure. So we'll, we'll take the bits and pieces home and uh, hope nobody gets hurt too bad. And, and uh, all, all we care about is the color. If we get nice color, fine. <laughs> That's all we're shooting the for. Electronics. That's right. all NBC cares about, sure. Right. This, this last four years has been uh, pretty bizarre for you. Bizarre, stupid, and pointless. And, and nobody's sorrier about it than me. <laughs> <laughs> so. Uh, has it evolved, the show? Yeah, it's, uh, you know, it's like anything, uh, uh, anything that you're involved in, or, or, geez, anybody who even opens a shoe store. The shoe store six months into it is not the shoe store you open the, the first day, you know. And uh, there are various points where, in the first six months, we did everything we ever wanted to do on the show, and we were still on the air, which uh, surprised everyone. So then, uh, then it becomes tough, you know, every night, or in our case, four nights a week, and then, uh, I said it before, it's like chasing a truck downhill, you know, you, you got to come up with even a bad idea, you know, let it forget a good idea, but you just have to keep coming up with them. And, uh, and then you kind of get beyond that and you sort of get a, a pace and a, and, a, uh, and a system and a, uh, a rhythm to the show. Uh, and then it keeps changing, you know, you have some personnel changes and so it, it just kind of finds its own, uh, like a stream finding its own level, its own path. You know, it sounds like, sure, the show is funny, but it's serious. I mean, you guys work in this. Yeah, oh, we take it very seriously. We, 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 we like it to look like we don't take it too seriously. We like it to be sloppy, and we like it to, to, to give people the impression that it's, uh, it's goofy and that really anything could happen. But, you know, before we do the show, we spend all day thinking very seriously about how can we achieve that illusion. And uh, Carefully orchestrated anything can happen. Yeah, yeah, because you can't have anarchy. You know, that would just be insane. Uh, and, and I don't think overall very entertaining. I think it's great periodically for you to lose control of it and for me to be out of control. I think that helps, you know, perpetuate the, the illusion about the show. But you can't have it every night. I mean, I think people really, uh, you know, they, they, they say about television, you really don't have to be good, you just have to be on. And, and once we got past the point where we were new to people, then you get a little familiarity built up, and I think that's a real advantage. Just they, they want to see something reassuring. They say, oh, this is where he does that, this is where he does that. They don't want bedlam every night. They, they want the notion that it might happen, though. Do you think that audience that watches your show is different than the, the audience that watches at 9 o'clock at night? Do you think there's something different about people that are going to stay up that late to watch? Yeah, it's, uh, you know, primarily prisoners. They have nothing to do, and so they're up that late. Uh, well, you know, demographically, apparently, it is a little different. It's not the it's not the core primetime audience. Uh, 
we, what we've in the last couple of years, thanks to Bill Cosby, we're getting more and more of the primetime audience. You know, I, I would love to take credit for our success, but uh, you know, I think uh, NBC pretty much owes this guy uh, uh, some property in Bel Air or Palm Beach, uh, and it's really helped us. You know, you get some spillover from the people who normally wouldn't be watching us, and that was a big help. It's uh, see now that you're in New York. You don't do the Carson show anymore. I did it. As a matter of fact, on Thanksgiving was the last time I was... Uh, I, I don't host it anymore, no, yeah. but I guess I was yeah. a guest on it in, in uh, Thanksgiving. So that's, is that something... Being interviewed is different than being on the other side of the bench. Do you miss that that live, oh, no. semi-live? No, doing, doing the, uh, the Tonight Show is the most uh, pressure I've ever been under uh, in, in, in my, uh, since I've been in television. Because that's 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 the show that really meant the most to me when I was starting out as a comedian, and uh, and Carson was the most important personality to me, uh, who was on the air and still is on the air. So you really want to impress him, and 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 regardless of how badly I screw up my own show, uh, I get to come back the next night, or so far anyway. <laughs> uh, on the Tonight Show, all you really want to do is for you want to make Johnny laugh, you want to make him think you're funny, and you want to be able to do well enough for them to invite you to come back. Uh, but what you really want is for the people, and this happens automatically, if people watching see Carson thinking you're funny, they automatically think you're funny. His stamp of approval is the most important thing for anybody in comedy, you know. Do you think that's pretty much the same way with your show, too? In other words, people come on and they want to impress David Letterman. Um, I don't think so at this point, because we, we've been on the air four years, and it's been, uh, you know, if, uh, like uh, Bob Hope says, if it was a fight, it should have been stopped. But uh, the, the Tonight Show is looking at a quarter of a century. So that's an institution. No, you can't compare that. Okay. Well, hey. That's it. Well, here, have, have some of this shrimp, for heaven's sake. Don't go away uh, empty-handed, for God's sakes. There you go. This is the barbecued shrimp. Lord knows what this is. But uh, decoratively presented, don't you think? Thank you so much. Boy, I'll tell you. I tell you, 20 years, where did the time, where did the time go? Now, Paul, tell, tell the people what you did on Thursday night, because I think a lot of people may not know about this, and I know you were very excited to be a part of it and explain to them what it was and well, what you did. Well, we taped, of course, first in the daytime, we taped the big uh, anniversary special. Right, right, but then you had to get back to New York City for what? We turned around and came immediately back for the big Rock and Roll Hall of Fame dinner that uh, myself and the cats and the band, uh, we played it. Now, you guys were the band for the... Uh, we were the band at the yeah. Hall of Fame. Yeah. The Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. Of course, being a band flying in to the Hall of Fame dinner in a, in a, in a charter plane, being a rock band flying... Pretty exciting. You know, it was a little, yeah, we were a little nervous. Yeah. You know, uh, we thought what, we were going to go directly into the Hall of Fame. Now, what... What a way to make... What now, what to, was the, uh, the highlight of the festivity for you? Well, I think it got to be the huge jam at the end of the... Now, who was involved in that? Well, you know, Chuck Berry played, Jerry Lee Lewis played, John Fogarty played. All at one time. Neil Young, everybody was on the stage. The kid, Keith and Woody from the Stones. I mean, you name it. Billy Joel on organ, you know. Stevie Winwood with a Give Me Some Lovin' and forget about it. It was yeah. over. But it was we a big show. Of, yeah, it was a big show. Now, why, why can't we have John Fogarty on this show? He'll, he'll never do this. No, I don't know. He's a big fan of this show. Now, is he or not? Yeah, he said he was. Well, he's, yeah. we should have him on the show because uh, we think he's terrific. Let's challenge him right now. John Fogarty, if you're out there. Come on this. Come on this show. Well, it would, be, it would be nice to have him on the show. I'd like to be in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. You are in it. I'm in it? You were inducted, yeah. <laughs> I, was, I, was, yeah. I was inducted. Well, yeah. what do you know? Uh, okay, well, that's good. Now, now we got that out of the way, and, and I'm really, really happy. And I saw you guys on uh, that uh, show, Entertainment Tonight, with yeah. What's-Her-Name. Um, <laughs> yeah, Hope Lang is the host of the well, show. <laughs> hey, well, I just want to say it was a big honor for us to be there, and, and you sort of made it possible, David Letterman. So thank you very I much. I had nothing to do with it, but you know I'm why. glad. You anyway, know what so, I mean. so you see what happened. We're you getting ready. I mean. We're getting ready to do this uh, fourth anniversary show, and uh, we did it from an airplane, and we flew down to Miami, and we taped it on the 747, uh, uh, provided by the friendly folks at TWA. Can I say TWA? Uh, yes. Can I say it? I have to say it. I have to say it like every eight minutes. TWA was. <laughs> Uh, you try and get a plane for the day without paying for it. Um, 
So, and our captain on the flight, uh, we knew we were in good hands. Captain Billy. Yeah. <laughs> and our, our co-pilot, of course, was his little friend, Scooter. Uh, but, but, but they were very nice, an enormous plane. One of these 747 things weighs like 600,000 pounds. And uh, so we taped our anniversary show uh, on the plane, and Paul and the band was with us and uh, were with us. And I want to thank uh, not only the people at uh, that airline, TWA, uh, but also our uh, uh, engineering uh, crew. Of course, we took uh, many of our own staff members and uh, makeup people and, uh, and uh, a wardrobe. And uh, what else did we take? Uh, Yes, we took every, yeah, our staff, but the engineering crew, these people, uh, like 19 or 20 of these guys, many of whom work with us every night in the studio, were on this plane like 18, 20 hours loading it up, and uh, you can't, you know, you just can't say you're going to do a, a show on an uh, uh, airplane and then do it. You have to, you know, so thanks to all of those people uh, who did that, and it turned out pretty nicely, and we'll hope you watch that. Now, what else? Oh, now, this is interesting. Oh, uh, let me see that magazine, Paul. This thing here, yeah. you mean, that I was just summing through? Oh, no, wait a minute. I'm not ready for that for a second. Just a minute, just a minute. <laughs> So we go to Miami, see, and yeah. we're staying in this hotel, and, uh, and uh, it's a nice hotel, ex except one thing. They have, like, uh, these chairs, like Minute Ball designed these chairs. They're, the back of these chairs is, like, seven feet high, and, and, and the rest of the, the chair is conventional normal seat, but the back of the chair goes way up there like that, which means every time you get up to leave the room, you kill your dinner companion because the chair... Boom! So if you stay in this hotel, please keep an eye on the youngsters because, seriously, they will be... Ah! Ah! So, or take some sandbags to counterbalance these chairs. Uh, do I have to mention the name of the hotel? <laughs> yeah, that's true. <laughs> uh, but the people in Miami were... Nice, really nice. Uh, uh, you know, you can go down there, you can take the train, you can drive, or you can fly. Uh, we went down on an airline, CWA. <laughs> also, I want to thank the, uh, I should thank the people who are involved in the FAA, uh, Federal Aeronautics Administration. And uh, you'd think that guys like that in that agency wouldn't have a sense of humor, but... <laughs> Uh, but they worked uh, very hard and were very cooperative. Now, this show uh, is done from uh, 747, and it'll be an hour and a half on uh, Saturday night. We got a nice show here. What else are we doing? How about this? Oh, little, yeah. Okay, mention that. A little time on this. Yeah. The brand new Newsweek. Look who's on the cover. Yeah. This kid. <laughs> Let me see that. That's me. Hey, come on, yeah. Now, do I, do I have time for one, one more little anecdote here? Sure. Yeah. All right, I have time for That's me in the upper left, I guess, on the cover. No, that's not you. <laughs> now, a couple of weeks ago, we had Jim, uh, Jim McMahon, the quarterback for the world champion Chicago Bears, on. <laughs> so this guy calls up from this sporting goods company, Adidas. Can I say that name? Adidas? I guess so. Okay. <laughs> now, now, Mr. Big Shot from the sporting goods company calls up, and he says, uh, and by the way, these guys are like lower than record executives. This kind of guy. <laughs> Always trying to work a deal. And, be and believe me, record executives, the bottom of the shaft. Anyway, this guy calls up and he says, uh, I see you're having uh, Jim McMahon on, uh, on the show. He says, uh, what about, and you can hear on the phone, you can hear the guy doing this. What about uh, if I, uh, you know, I uh, send you over uh, some headbands, you know, <laughs> have some fun with those headbands, that kind of thing. And, uh, and the headbands are like a dollar five, see. So I said, Headbands? Screw the headbands. Why don't you send over some shoes? And he says, well, I don't know. And I said, no, I've worn these shoes all my life. Believe me, I was literally born in a pair of your shoes. Come on, turn loose with about 50 pair of shoes. <laughs> so in my wildest dreams, I assume that a guy who does this is really not going to send shoes over, you know. He's over busy making those woodchuck noises all day. He's gonna... <laughs> so he says, all right, all right, send me the sizes. So we sent him the sizes of everybody on our staff. Like, we get back in the office this morning, there are the shoes. Unbelievable. For the first time in my life, one of these guys comes through with anything. So, whoever the gentleman was, thank you very much. Now, here's the bad news. Can we get a picture of this? This is the current issue of Newsweek. Here I am, sitting on a hillside in California. Take a oh, look at the no. footwear, ladies and gentlemen. Well, no, those aren't Adidas, are they? <laughs> oh, 
No, no. Those are Nikes, and, uh... I'm sorry, it's, a, it's an old, uh... I'm sorry? This is the guy's name? Oh, this is... This is Dave Fogelson at Adidas, and, and I'm sorry, and I'm guessing we'll be hearing from his counterpart at Nike pretty soon. Uh, but that's the point of being in show business, is a lot of free stuff. <laughs> Free stuff makes us happier, and of course, we pass that happiness along to you, the home viewers, and you really enjoy the show a lot more when we're happy, so. Okay. Where are we? Are we ready to go? Is there anything else we ought to talk about? Thank you very much, Coy. What a swinging introduction that was. Thank you. David, I've been meaning to talk to you about something. What do you want to Maybe talk about? Maybe this isn't the time, I don't know. When are you going to stop using sex as a weapon? That's, that's what I wanted. Isn't that you the know, craziest song title I've ever heard? Uh, are you excited, Paul, about our big anniversary program? Now, I have to mention this because it's coming up Saturday night, February 9th. February 9th? 1st. February 1st, coming up Saturday, February 1st. This Saturday, 1st. right? This Saturday. Yeah. Just a few days from now, Feb 1. And uh, we're on at 11.30 on Saturday night. It's our fourth anniversary program, Paul and the Band, and uh, a lot of stuff from the past four years, a lot of stuff you haven't seen before, and it's all done from the inside. Paul, go ahead, finish it up. Doing the show, actually, from a TWA aircraft, got on a plane. Oh, you can't mention them anymore. You can't? No, we overdid that. I better take these. Yeah, take off your wings take there. Take these wings off. Oh my! Oh, see, see, there, there was things. a huge. Uh, we're in a big trouble now with that. All right. Well, so we just... got on a, a certain airline. And yeah. We, we did a show. <laughs> did a show right from the plane, which I thought was sort of interesting. That's right. Inside of this yeah. uh, beautiful Boeing airplane, we can mention Boeing, can't we? Yeah. yeah they they built the plane. <laughs> And, uh, and it's an exciting show. We're, we're uh, pretty pleased with it. It turned out, uh, no, it turned out great. It turned, it's a nice show. It'll be on Saturday night, 1130. Also, Miami, we have to say wonderful things about Miami. Beautiful city, lovely community, nice people, lovely hotel. Very nice hotel. Is it nice? Oh, we, it really was, especially after the phone call we got yesterday. It uh, really ah. is a lovely hotel. Ah. Yes. I heard it was fabulous. I didn't get a chance to I, stay. I actually have some photos here. Maybe we can see some photos I heard of the it hotel. Was fabulous. Here's a, a shot of the mayor. Maybe we can get a look at that while we're waiting on the uh, photos of the hotel. There. <laughs> That's a joke, Miami. And uh, here's, here's one of the lovely hotel rooms right there. Ooh. But uh, can I, I mention the name now? Mention it. It's the Mayfair House oh, Hotel. Mayfair House Hotel. It's the airport Mayfair house, right? Yeah. But we, we had a lovely time, didn't we, Paul? We had a swell time. It was a swell time going down. Of course, Band and I had to, had had to, to come, come right, right back, back for your so gig. You don't mind it when I say gig, do you? No, I like when you say it. Here's a picture of one of the stewardesses we had on the, on the flight down. Lovely lady. All right. Here's the cockpit, by the way. Have you ever seen the inside of one of these? Pretty impressive. Look at that. That's the inside of a 747 right there. Howard... Uh, so that's uh, Saturday night, and uh, we'll tell you more about it. But it's an all right show, don't you think? It's an all right show. Yeah, it's a great show. Uh, what do we do now? We're going to do the top ten or get right on with it? Okay, this is, you know, we're thinking about uh, discontinuing our top ten lists, and uh, we're, we're only thinking about it. And uh, tonight from the home office in Milwaukee, we have, uh, I tell you what, let's do soup of the day first. Can we do that? Look at people running around. <laughs> Some kind of an alert in the studio here. <laughs> what is it, Hal? We'll do soup of the day later, okay? Oh, okay, we'll do soup of the day later. Later. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you, cats. Thank you all. So nice. Boy. Thanks a lot, David. I got to say, we got a great, great show tonight. I'm very nice excited show. about it. But Terrific before show. we get into the show, yeah. let me just read. I got a list here of uh, some of the places Joan Rivers is going to be appearing. Oh, good. Sweet bizarre. Well, February 7th, 8th, and 9th, she's going to be headlining at Caesars Lake Tahoe. Uh -huh. Oh, that'll be a good show, yeah. And uh, February 12th through 20th, uh -huh. she's at Caesars in Vegas. Oh, great. February 22nd, she's at the Bayfront Center in St. Petersburg, Florida. Oh, so she's coming east then. 
And uh, on the 23rd, she's going to be at the Bob Carr Auditorium in Orlando, Florida. February 27th, 28th, and March 1st. An interesting move for Joan. <laughs> Carlos and Charlie's in Los Angeles. Oh, Carlos and Charlie's. Well, I hear nice. that's where she goes just to work out her stuff. She works out there, yeah. That's good. That's kind of sort of like her workshop. So that's, you know, that's Thank where Joe's going to be. Thank you very much, Paul, for keeping us abreast of that. Yeah. Uh, by the way, speaking of Florida, we had a, a great time in Miami. I'm sorry you couldn't stay there. Yeah, we had to get back. Carlos. We had a terrific time, and uh, the hotel was nice. Do I mention it again? The, the... All right, so it was a little close to the airport. But other than that, it was a... No, no, it's a great hotel. It's the Mayfair House, Mayfair House Hotel there in Coconut Grove, and we took a trip down there. And by the way, our uh, fourth anniversary special will be on this Saturday night. Now, let me tell you something. We've done three specials this year. One was kind of lame. That was the Tri-State Special. <laughs> then we did another one that turned out pretty well. I think this one is going to turn out okay, so you might want to watch this. That's our fourth anniversary special, and uh, we taped the show uh, uh, on a uh, 747 airplane. So, uh, 11.30, Saturday night. Paul, of course, and the band is on it. We'll have a lot of fun, on right, the plane. Paul? Huh? We were all on the plane. Yeah. <laughs> this is a sample of the kind of high-quality, high-quality comedy you'll be receiving. Uh, yeah. Uh, huh? Yeah, you will. <laughs> Let's go. Here we go. It's viewer mail night. Let's rock into the show. All right, here we go. Viewer mail night. Actual letters from actual readers uh, sending these in. And we're, remember, we're building that pyramid of comedy. So we have to establish <laughs> solid building blocks of comedy first, and then we skyrocket right up to the top. Uh, oh, look at this show. My gosh, what a show. Today, Richard Lewis is here and Goldie Hawn, ladies and gentlemen, our good friend Paul Schaefer. Paul, how are you doing? Thank you very much. Nice to see you. You're getting number five here. Yes, indeed. Number well, five what? Season. Five, fifth year on the air or something. Feel good about it. Yeah. Feel marvelous about it. I finally got around to reading the Newsweek article, though. Yeah? On you. I don't know. Is it a little late? I finally got around to reading it. I don't know what they, they said about me, though. Just uh, he, behind the keyboard oozing unctuousness. What kind of a thing? Well, that's good, though. Is that a good yeah, thing that's to good. say about a person? No, that's excellent. Let I me, guess uh, so. Let me get you... You know, uh, last week we went to Miami. Oh, by the way, Miami is... Uh, are you folks from Miami? Yeah, it's, it's very nice down there. We had a lovely time. We stayed at this hotel. The name of the hotel is the, uh, the Mayfair House. Is it near the airport, Howard, the Mayfair House? Um, oh, nowhere near the airport. Anyway, and they have these jumbo chairs in every room. Well, these people sent a chair. Now, you, you think I'm making this up about these chairs. Uh, let me show you. They sent it to us today. Honest to God, this is from the... Let me get you the chair. Where is it? Hi. How you doing? Let me get this here. Here's the chair. Okay, now that's, that's the chair. Every room in the... has like two dozen of these chairs. And, and the best we can come up with is we think they used to be coffee tables and they made them into chairs. Now watch this. This is the only problem you think, oh, well, we're getting plenty. We're getting, certainly getting the most for our chair dollar here, right? <laughs> you're in your uh, uh, room there and you're visiting with friends. You have to get up to answer the door or go somewhere to get something. Oh! My God! The baby! It's the baby! Oh, that's down there in uh, Miami, and uh, we had a nice time, but I put the chair up. So also now, uh, Barbara Gaines, who uh, works on this program, gets a letter today in the mail from and a bill here. Uh, she's been billed now $100, $101.41 for uh, bar charges. They had a little bar in, in each of your room, and uh, now, uh, Barbara, did you drink that much? No. What it what did you have exactly? Two Perrier and a small bottle of champagne. Two Perrier and a small bottle of champagne. Now, wait a minute. The, the small bottle of champagne would be 60. Yeah. <laughs> and the Perrier is 20 each. I don't know. That adds up. <laughs> what? <laughs> <laughs> All right.
Uh, tomorrow on this program, Wayne Gretzky, Paul, Aki, ah, Aki. Yes, indeed. Uh, we'll be here from the Edmonton Oilers. Lovely Comedian thing. Jerry Seinfeld, a very funny gentleman, and Connie Chung will be with us. Great. Who, by the way, called earlier tonight. Did she call? Yeah. I think everybody in this building is about half nuts, by the way, but Connie, Connie will be here tomorrow. What did she say, a, Connie? I can't tell you, but she's a sweet woman, and we're happy to have her here. Right. Uh, you know, the weekend before last, we flew to Miami and taped a show on an airplane along the way. Uh, when we landed, we had to stay somewhere, and when we stayed somewhere, we had to promise to mention them on the air. So here now is a videotaped tour of my room at the beautiful Mayfair House Hotel in Coconut Grove, Florida. Hi there. Welcome to my room. This is the presidential suite here at the Mayfair House Hotel in Florida. This is where I'm staying while we're in town. Come on in. I'd like to show you around the place. First of all, say hello to my, uh, this is my bodyguard. This is uh, Ronnie Roberts, and he's been provided by the hotel security staff. Ronnie, what are you supposed to do while I'm in Florida here? I'm supposed to protect you and make sure everything works out fine. Uh -huh, and everything is working out fine, isn't Definitely. it? We yeah. couldn't be having more fun, could we? No, no <laughs> you're, more fun. you're supposed to go with me wherever I go, right? Wherever you go. Okay, come on in. Take a look at the room. This is the presidential suite. First thing you notice, this lovely oil painting of, uh, Lady Bird Johnson, right over there on the wall. It's, it's lovely. We sit here by the hour and gaze at it. Come on in. I'll show you the rest of the room. Uh, I think you get a kick out of it. Oh, uh, did you see this? That's Betty Ford. <laughs> All right, this is, the, uh, this is the Grand Salon right here. This is where we do most of our uh, entertaining. Ronnie and I had a very nice dinner here la last night, and uh, Ronnie sat down there. I was right here and uh, had the room service. And this is, uh, who did we figure out that was? Rosalind Carter. That's right, Rosalind Carter. So it's, uh, over here is the, oh, I'm sorry, Ronnie, can you get that for me? This is, if you ever want to do any uh, after dinner, entertaining, this is a nice uh, conversation area. And I like to sit here in this chair by the... Uh, window because you get that terrific Miami sunshine when you're seated over here. It's pretty pleasant, isn't it, Ronnie? Yeah. Okay. Uh, over here, let me show you the... Oh, Ronnie, I'm sorry. Uh, uh, these, uh, turns out these uh, chairs used to be coffee tables and uh, in the balance or something. Really, uh, it's a great hotel. This would be my only complaint right here. Look, when you want to wash your hands, look at this sink. This is, this is really tough. It's, it's hard on your back, but, you know, I can certainly live with it, can't I? Yeah, okay. Now, the Mayfair house isn't really on the ocean. It's very near the ocean, but it's not right on the water. So they've provided you with what I think is a really handy appliance. This little sound effect machine, you turn that on. Can you hear that? What? Well, you can almost feel the waves lapping up against your feet, can't you? Yeah, that's very nice. All right, let me... That on. So they got one of these in every room. Uh, yesterday we had a big day, so I was up late here at the writing table uh, filling out uh, reports and forms, mailing off correspondence to the executives at NBC back in New York, and I did all of that right here at the comfort of, uh, of the writing table, and it worked out pretty Oh, geez, Ronnie, I'm sorry. Uh, quickly now, let me show you the uh, master bedroom, and uh, I think you'd be pretty impressed with this. Come on inside here. Uh, here it is. This is the uh, master bedroom, and it's a spacious, of course, luxurious. And uh, we have a patio right out there. And uh, I'm sorry, excuse me. Excuse me, is, is that my patio? Um, we're sharing. Yes, we're, we're breakfast, your lunch. I think you get it at 1. 1 o'clock, yeah. Yeah. Yes, yeah. All right. See you then. <laughs> okay. They're lunch there. Okay, thank you. Ronnie, have those people checked. I'm serious. Uh, oh, let me get that share. Let me uh, show you one final thing here about the, the suite we're in. This is the, uh, geez, this is the master bathroom, and, and as you can see, it's luxurious here at the uh, Mayfair House Hotel in uh, Coconut Grove. This is kind of a nice touch. This, uh, you see this? Over here, let me close the door, Ronnie, so they can see that. This is a, uh, this is actually a camera, security camera, and everything you do in here is, is broadcast all over the lobby. <laughs> It's crazy, it's nuts, but it's fun. Uh, okay, here it is, the presidential suite. <clears throat> We've had a swell time. Ronnie, get, get this chair here, please. Yeah, pick it up. So, if you're ever in town, think about staying here. All right, we'll be right back. Uh, we'll be right back with Pat Morita. All right, now what about witty impressions? Oh, no, I can't. Come on. What are they? 
You know, we had Ted Koppel in, yes. this, in this very chair, and yeah, he did very good. witty impressions. Now, yeah, just just funny. give us the list of what you do. Well, um, you know, I do the standards. I mean, the the ones that everybody can do. <laughs> John Wayne, I no. suppose. <laughs> <laughs> well, now, which ones do you do? Well, you know, this the standard ones, like... Uh, Lily Tomlin's Ernestine or, uh, let's or hear a Roseanne, little, uh, Rosanna Danner. Or, let's hear a little. Know, those are easy. Well, let's hear a little. But, I, but they won't be any good because I... They're going to be great, Connie. No. <laughs> Try but, one. I mean, and then I, you know, I do my own, like a, a, a British librarian or a... Um, but they're not very good. You don't want to do the British librarian? No. You don't want to do any of this? Well, I, I'm in practice. <laughs> All right, I'll tell you what. I'll tell you what. <laughs> well, I'll tell you what. Now, wait a minute, wait a minute. Let's, let's, we'll go on to something else. We'll give you a chance to compose yourself, okay. and then we'll think about it and come back. By the way, uh, you know, you were, played an important part in our anniversary program. I noticed that. Did you see, did you see the, yeah, uh, yeah we had you right there on the side of the plane. Yeah. Do we have videotape of that? Yeah. Okay, let's take a look uh, here. Plane thing again. Uh, this was uh, the aircraft that we flew to Miami on, and as you can see right there on the side of the fuselage of this Boeing 747. The night show comes the, to you entirely that's us right from there. this gigantic 747 aircraft. By the way, that's <laughs> Johnny. John Chancellor didn't want to do it. I have never seen my body look so good. Um, what were you going to say? I said, I've never no, seen I my body look so good. Terrific. Now, tell me, tell me about the falling asleep on command. Oh, there it oh, is. Again. That's great. Can I have the plane now? Yeah, it's all yours. <laughs> we'll have it sent over. Great. Now, you, you can... I'm sorry. You also, you were wearing a jacket that had... Uh, my husband and I were watching, you know, and he, David was Your husband's was name walking. is... is uh, Maury Povich. Maury Povich, a newscaster in Washington, uh -huh, D.C. D.C. Maury. Maury and Connie. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and you were... <laughs> You were walking down the aisle of the. Yeah, uh, I have it right here. It's plane. a flight jacket. Yeah. It's right here. Oh, that's great. Right there. Oh, isn't that terrific? Yeah. Hey, you want to try that on? Really? Yeah, you can't keep it, but you can try it on. Oh. Well, figure oh, it out. Really? Cookies and socks, you're not getting much. No, but. Really, I can't. You can try it on. No, that's the one. That goes to the archives, that goes to the Smithsonian. Now, Connie, it, it, I think we should break into small groups and, and, and decide. And <laughs> let them decide. All right, I'll tell you what. You, you do your British librarian, maybe you'll get the jacket. Oh. <laughs> Just a little. Just that's, a little. That's terrific. You're not going to do nice? it. Yeah. No. Oh, okay. You can have the jacket. <laughs> um, all right, Connie, are you still on that Sunrise program? Mm -hmm. You still on American Almanac? Mm -hmm. All right. Yeah. You're going to be at NBC for a long time, aren't you? Absolutely. Yeah. Now, if these meatheads let you get out of here... No. No, I won't start. Okay. Okay. <laughs> you know what I mean? Uh -huh. Yeah. Okay, uh, Lawrence Grossman. If he... Never mind. Uh, we have to say goodbye now to Connie. We're going away for station identification. Wayne Gretzky will be back, and also Jerry Seinfeld. Nice to see you. <laughs> gentlemen of the audience and to you our home viewers good evening and welcome to the program what a show tonight oh tomorrow is good also uh this is great how were we able to do this tom waits gonna sing with the band uh he's gonna sing yeah w with the band with i don't the know band. whether he's gonna really perform with us or not no he will won't he he's a little well, he, he, he damn well better he's a uh and also this is pretty exciting mary tyler moore will be here tomorrow night folks yep uh, you know, long before, now this is risky, nobody, nobody in the building has seen this next piece. We're just going to play it and, and hope for the best. Uh, long before Donahue, or those weenies on the CBS Morning News, got the idea, this television program went to Miami, Florida. I know I've talked about uh, our trip already at, uh, quite extensively. Oh, the plane, yeah. Uh, but I have a nagging fear that I haven't told you quite enough about the hotel we stayed in. Here now is part two of our videotaped tour of the Mayfair House Hotel in, uh, where was it? Yeah, what Coconut Grove. This is really a beautiful view. This is from the roof of the Mayfair House Hotel in, uh, in uh, Coconut Grove, Florida, where we're staying. And you can see uh, Biscayne Bay and the Atlantic Ocean, and it's, uh, it's uh, plush and luxurious up here, isn't it, Ronnie? Yeah. We, have a, we have a swimming pool. Uh, that's, that's not an Olympic-sized pool, is it? No, no. no and, and it's uh, kind of an odd shape. What, what is that shape? Oh, it looks to me like a... Like a dog bone. 
And uh, Ronnie, uh, this is uh, Grant Tinker uh, from NBC. This is Ronnie Roberts. This is my bodyguard, Grant. You having a nice time? Oh, terrific. Yeah. What do you What do you think of the area? Oh, I think Miami is great. I was just sitting here thinking, maybe we should have a cop show down here. Uh -huh. Two guys, you know. Yeah. And one guy can reduce himself to about six inches. You've been in the sun too long, Grant. Okay. Take take a load off there, buddy. All right. Uh, let's go look around. Well, I'll tell you, if you're coming down here, make sure you arrange your uh, package through a reputable travel agent. You know, the CBS Morning News is also here. There's their hotel over there. Take a look at what they get on the roof. Now, to help pay for the rooms, they're actually slopping hot tar all day. Oh, brother. For me, you know, save 20 bucks a room, it's not worth it. Did, did I mention we're at the uh, Mayfair House Hotel here in Coconut Grove? <laughs> we have to keep mentioning that every few minutes yeah. to pay for the rooms. <laughs> uh, Ronnie, this is uh, Barbara Gaines, uh, our production. What is it now? Production coordinator. This is Ronnie Roberts, uh, my bodyguard. Uh, Barbara, do, do me a favor. Just you got some stuff on your mouth. Just, just do, Ronnie, take care of that for me, would you? Uh, what have you been drinking, Barbara? Just that's good. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, Ronnie, you get a lot of celebrities here, don't you? Don't look now, just over my shoulder, Grace Jones. Really? Unbelievable, right over there. Yeah. Not bad, huh? You know, a trip to Florida wouldn't be complete without a look at some of the marvelous Florida beach property here. And uh, Ronnie, open the door and show them the folks. Look at that. Ooh, my gosh. Unbelievable. What, what does that remind you of, Ronnie, when you see that? Looks like a beautiful beach. Yeah, it reminds you, it's like a postcard, doesn't it? Yeah, yeah, really. Oh, brother, it makes you want to take off your shoes and run around out there, doesn't it? Yeah. Well, go ahead, would you like to? Oh, yeah. Go ahead, Ronnie. Oh, you know, what a coincidence. You never guess who else is staying here at the hotel. And I forgot the name. What, what is the name of the hotel? Mafia House Hotel. Oh, yeah, right. Uh, and this is kind of sad. Eric Estrada, right over there. Really? Yeah, the show's been off the air four or five years. The guy apparently still thinks he's with the highway patrol. You know, uh, Ronnie, it's interesting. We're way up here on the roof of the... Mayfair House Hotel. Uh, how far uh, off the ground are we? How many stories? What is it, six, six stories? Four, six stories, yeah. yes. But you still see uh, evidences of uh, wildlife. For example, look at this little harmless uh, snake. Oh, jeez, it's a mox. Damn. Oh, it's a coral snake. Ronnie, take care of that. Come on. Whew. Okay, so that's pretty much it for the uh, tour of the hotel. And I'm, I'm, I must say, being up here in the sun like this, whew, boy, I'm really, really broken. Quite a sweat there. What was, the, what was the name of the place again, Ronnie? It's the Mafia House. Yeah. Uh, do you think we've mentioned the name of this place enough time to pay for these rooms? Oh, you bet you. Yeah, it's one of these weasel deals NBC has gotten us into. Uh, yeah. But it was uh, fun uh, meeting you, Ronnie. Pleasure to meet you, thanks, sir. Thanks for all your help. Yeah. Uh, good luck to you, and I have a sense you're finished. Okay. <laughs> no, I'm just joking. I, I hear wonderful things about you, seriously. Why don't you say good night to everybody? Take it easy, yeah. good night. Yeah. But I do think you're done here. <laughs> oh, no, no, I'm joking now. Yeah, you know what I mean? Yeah. Have you had a good time? Yeah, sure yeah, do. Yeah, well, I'm glad you enjoyed it because you are very close to the end of your career here. Thank you. <laughs> okay, we'll be right back with Wayne Gretzky, ladies and gentlemen. We're going to uh, bring Mary Tyler Moore out here in a moment or two. Now, Paul, is that you? What? Who's doing that? It's me. I'm sorry. <laughs> Blame it on. Uh, as everybody in America knows, the weekend before last, we flew down to Miami to videotape a show. The people there were so were nice enough to throw us a party when we got there, and I thought the least we could do was share less than a minute's worth of videotape memories from that party with all of you folks. This took place in Miami. And uh, here we are at the airport. That's uh, us getting off the plane. Our long living hell at last was over. This is uh, some footage from the Miami hostage team in there. Oh, there I am getting into my private car. We all had uh, police escorts and private cars, limousines for everybody. There's, there's Paul getting into his limousine. <laughs> and uh, this was the party on the roof of the hotel, uh, the Mayflower House. And it said uh, late night with David Leitman had some kind of an incontinence problem. We don't know who this woman was, but we found her vastly entertaining. There's Don Johnson, star of Miami Vice. 
There's a Larry Bud. He'd undergone some strenuous interrogation at the airport. There she is again. It's the kind of thing you never get tired of seeing. Now, here's a blimp. We are not at liberty to give you the name of the blimp. It is a brand name, but we can't tell you which tire company's blimp that was. And there it is, dripping off into the sunset. That's our big gala party in Miami. Now, are we off the hook with these people? It's, it's not the Mayflower House. No, it's the Mayfair House. The Mayflower House is a dump. Thank God we didn't stay there. We, st we stayed at the Mayfair House. So be sure you don't make that mistake when you go down there. I know, I know, but you all look a little older, too. <laughs> I'm only here, actually, because Dave Letterman is a great friend of mine. We're neighbors in Connecticut, and I've been so worried about the youngster uh, and helping him with his material this week that uh, i not a thought of much to say for myself. So, and he's done so well, and I'm so proud of him, so you'll understand why I've kept it so short. Um, I only use these for ad living, incidentally, and um, I'm asked to give an award for the outstanding writing in a variety or music program. God knows without writers, we would all look like Marcel Marceau, and um, so I am proud to mention first Sylvia Fine's musical comedy tonight, three great performances. Late Night with David Letterman's fourth anniversary special. The 1986 Tony Awards. The Tonight Show starring Johnny Carson, guests David Letterman, Maureen McGovern, and Adela Rivera. And uh, the American Film Institute salute to Billy Wilder. And the winner is... Well, you better s clear the aisles and <laughs> take care of the, the ch children and, and, and the women here. It's David Letterman, Steve <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, the Vienna Boys Choir is also <laughs> Who are you now? I'm, I'm Steve O'Donnell, the head writer. Of uh, course, of course right. I've heard it. Uh, uh, I want to say thank you for, for everybody up here. Uh, the Academy, thank you very much. And with, with so many people up here, you probably think there's uh, no one left in New York for us to thank. But I want to thank uh, a great director, Hal Gurney, uh, our hardworking friends, Adam Resnick and uh, Maria Pope, uh, all, all the great people uh, in our office and in the studio. and. Uh, and uh, uh, NBC for all the free coffee, and uh, uh, oh, and especially uh, thanks to the uh, the guy who's the reason we're all here and why why work is so much fun, Dave Letterman. Thank you. Thanks very much. I uh, just want to uh, uh, add a couple of names of list: Brian McAloon and Ed Hall and Sue Hall and all of the friendly folks at uh, NBC. And, and Brandon, don't worry, by gosh, we're not going to be third for much longer. Uh, and. Uh, also, I, I want to thank my uh, family in Indianapolis and uh, my attorney in Indianapolis, Ron Elberger, only because it will really confuse him. <laughs> okay, thank you very much.